Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to continue our object oriented design course and uh, we are going to talk about abstraction today which is another important concept of object oriented programming and design. We are going to talk about what abstraction is, we are going to look at sample code, different types of implementation of abstraction and what are the benefits and risks of abstraction, right. So let's get started. What is abstraction, right? So at its core, abstraction is a process of you know, simplifying complex systems uh, by breaking down into smaller, more manageable parts, right? Uh, if you talk about in Java, abstraction is achieved through uh, abstract classes and through in interfaces. Abstract class is a class that cannot be instantiated, right? So you cannot create an object, object of an abstract class uh, and it can contain both abstract as well as concrete methods. Uh, basically, you can also add a method where you are implementing the logic inside that method and you can also add methods where you don't in, uh, implement the logic, just make them abstract, right? Interface on the other hand uh, can be implemented by any class, but interface does not uh, contain any concrete methods, right? So let's take a look at example, an example. So first to start with, let's look at what an abstract class is, right? So if you take an example, an abstract class looks like this, right? So we are taking an abstract class ve uh, vehicle and we have defined three abstract methods which are start engine, stop engine and move, right? See the abstract class, there is no implementation inside these methods. It's only def uh, defined. So those are only definitions of the methods. Where will this be implemented? It will be implemented via an extension. Since this is a class in Java, for example, Another class, which is a concrete class, uh, for example, car, bike, bus, which are all vehicles, will extend the vehicle abstract class, right? Uh, look at inheritance also, because this is a type of inheritance that we are also talking about. Uh, I'll uh, post the video link in my description. But if you look at this, say, for example, the car class, the car class extends vehicle class. And then inside that, you can add the implementation of start engine, stop engine, move engine for car, right? Same for class bike, same for class uh, bus. All the three types of vehicles, which uh, will have different ways of starting an engine, stopping an engine, different ways in which they move, right? So the implementation will differ. But to create an abstraction, tomorrow that can be a plane or anything, right? And any vehicle, so you have created an abstract class, uh, which can be extended by any concrete class. So this is one way of uh, creating abstract classes and using abstraction. Another way, like we mentioned, was through interfaces, right? So let's take a look at interfaces. An interface you, in Java, for example, you define it with the keyword interface, and you again take a method uh, whatever define the method say make sound uh, but here in interface like we spoke about in the definition you cannot add any methods with concrete implementation in the abstract class also we did not see any method but you can still add methods which have their own implementation right but here you cannot you can just provide the definitions and the classes which will implement the interface right so in this case if you see class dog implements animal. In inheritance, when we used inheritance for abstraction, we used the word extends. This we are talking about in Java, but it will be very similar in other programming languages also the concepts. Uh, in inheritance, when we use the abstract classes, uh, it was extending the abstract class, but in interface, we are implementing the interface, right? Because here you have to provide the implementation of the methods that are there in the uh, that are defined in the interface right so in this case we have overridden the method uh, that is defined in interface and uh, we are implementing creating an implementation of the method make sound right so system.println dog barks similarly we can add another class which again implements animal so the class name is cat it again has to override the make sound because uh, that is a definition of the interface and whichever uh, interface that you are your class is implementing you have to override those methods right and now you are providing your own uh, cat classes make sound implementation right so this is another way of abstracting now what are the benefits and risks that are associated with abstraction like you can understand that these are kind of 
definite benefits because you are creating contracts when you create SDKs, when you create JDKs, right? You, you basically define contracts, but you hide the implementation, right? So let's take a look at the benefits and risks. Let's start with benefits. Uh, definitely code reusability, abstract classes and interfaces provide a way to define common behaviors, right? Like we saw for animal class or the vehicle class, which are common behaviors, right? And also methods that can be reused across multiple classes, uh, which basically promotes code reusability, uh, reduces code duplication, right? Next is obviously flexibility and extensibility. Abstraction allows flexibility in the code. Uh, new classes can be easily added by implementing an existing interface, right? Like for example, where you can implement a dog class, you can implement a cat class like we saw, and the, the contract, the interface is already provided to you. So it is, it is easier, right? Next is encapsulation of implementation details. Yes, like we mentioned, uh, it is uh, it is a contract that you are providing. You are not actually exposing any of the code in the in the abstract class in the abstract class or in the interfaces, right? So it encapsulates the implementation details within the concrete classes, right? So that makes it easier to modify or extend the behavior of a class without affecting the rest of the code base. Like for example, you can change the implementation of make sound method in cat class without having to change the contract in the interface animal, right? So uh, definitely encaps encapsulation uh, is a benefit. Next is, yeah, improved code readability and maintainability. That's more important because uh, it, it promotes more structured and organized code base, like you, you can understand, uh, by basically abstracting away the implementation details, right, which basically leads to improved code readability and understanding of the code, which allows much more easier maintenance of the, clo uh, of the code uh, because it isolates the implementation details, uh, which makes it even more simpler to modify or extend the specific behaviors like we talked about, right? Now let's look at risks because there are some risks associated and in my in my day-to-day -day life, in my experience, I've seen these things have been, have, be, have been the case which we want to avoid. If you want to be a good software engineer or if you are giving an interview or anything, these are things that are looked at, right? So definitely uh, the first risk is increased complexity. Right, you, it is adding an extra added layer of complexity to the code base, which can make things harder to understand, specifically for junior developers, right? People who are, if you have a huge code base, right? Say if you are implementing a FinTech application or a social network application, right? Or a search engine, those can be huge code bases and there can be a several uh, contracts and you know, interfaces and abstract classes. So it might be difficult to navigate around the code, which might bring more complexity. Uh, over engineering my in my opinion this is one of the biggest risks because uh, basically developers uh, tend to create in the name of abstraction yeah we want to abstract things right and that is the right way to think but in the name of it for the sake of it they uh, they do it too much right they, they create too many interfaces too many abstract classes which basically results in an overly complicated and difficult to maintain code base, right? That is what we don't want. You have to use it, but you have to use it with that fine balance where it is needed, right? So this is in my opinion, if you're a senior engineer, that should be looked at. If you're a junior engineer, then you should not be over biased, right? On using abstraction everywhere, whether you, whether you need it or you don't need it, right? Uh, next is performance issues. Yes, uh, performance issues because it is kind of from the over engineering because it, uh, if there are too many layers of abstraction, right? The, so there are too many implementation details, too many hops in the code base, right? Which might not be properly optimized. So that can cause performance issues. And uh, last but not the least, we have increased development time. Yes, because uh, it, it can sometimes lead to increased development time because developers need to create more abstract classes and more interfaces and think about it. While if, if a code base is structured using, heavily using abstraction, then if you are using, say, uh, you are implementing a cache, right, for example, or you are implementing a circuit breaker, allow listing, right, like those kind of things which can different capabilities in the code base, you want that to be used and you want to create abstraction, you want to create interfaces because you don't know, like if you are implementing cache, there can be multiple layers of cache implementation uh, in, the, uh, in the background, right. Similarly, if you are creating a DTO or a database of, uh, class, 
you might want to create an interface and then each database object or each DAO layer can implement the data, uh, database interface, right? So, but those, if that is the pattern that you are following, can lead to increased development time because people have to think about it always. It's not, not the matter of just creating a class and implementing, but you have to think how it can be extensible, how it can be maintainable, right? So that was abstraction in object-oriented programming and design. Hopefully this was useful.